Um, so contrary to popular belief, sorry, popular talaga. <laughs> I think my being very vocal recently has is also a reaction to this. Um, and it's the spread of uh, misinformation online. It's it's really um, reached a peak. I'm DJ Pascual, and this is the statement issue of Rank Magazine. <laughs> So uh, they did not exactly encourage the creativity, my interest in creativity. So para I just considered creativity as like a hobby on the side that um, my family did not like. <laughs> so because uh, I love drawing, I love drawing mga Taylor Moon, ganyan. And of course, as an effeminate kid, um, it was major discouraged. But ayun, uh, I still kept on doing creative things like I like taking pictures as in I would bring uh, a camera to school and everything. So um, ayun, until college, syempre, I moved to Manila from Cavite and um, medyo na-exposed na ako sa, sa ibang uh, aspects of creativity. So um, ayun, uh, I ended up doing a t-shirt business with some of my org mates in an organization I, I joined called uh, Green Media Group in our university. And those t-shirts medyo became a hit. So um, we got featured in a lot of magazines. So that's how I got my foot into uh, the creative industry, the publishing industry, because we got featured nga in various team magazines. And um, that's how uh, the editors found my work through Multiply. <laughs> Um, kasi yun pa yung, yun yung parang Facebook dati. Um, and I would always upload my work on um, on Multiply. And I guess that just snowballed from there. Um, so contrary to popular belief, chari, popular talaga. <laughs> so contrary to, I think what most people think, na parang I uh, became a popular photographer because um, I'm friends with the artistas. Actually, wala talaga ako kilala. Um, in Manila, when I came to Manila, um, as in, I was just like a normal, like, provinciano kid. Um, na wala kong kilala talaga sa Manila. And I really, um, I think I paid my dues naman. Um, I think, um, it's very clear naman the difference between my commercial and my editorial work. I really, um, there's really a line between them. Um, and it rarely gets blurred, uh, unless it's like a fashion campaign or something. But um, my commercial work is very commercial. Like I, I, I not, not a lot of people know this, but I, I mostly shoot commercial jobs. But because I don't post them, um, not a lot of people see them. So um, it's usually like celebrities holding whatever, like deodorants, can do naganyan. That's um, my bread and butter. Kung baga dun ako um, na to survive. Um, and um, as far as creativity in commercial work, mostly those kinds of jobs, you just do whatever the client wants. I mean, there's no going around it. And um, and then in terms of um, magazine work naman, um, and I think not a lot of people know this, but magazines don't really pay a lot. Um, and we usually do magazines, creatives usually do magazines uh, just for um, to get our names out there and to be able to work with the best in the industry because some magazines you always get to work with uh, the best people. So um, yeah, I mean, uh, most of the work I post online is my magazine work and um, I think that's where you can really see um, what photographers or creatives can do. Um, cause there's a tiny bit more freedom in magazines and especially if it's like a personal, um, a personal shoot, uh, that you just produced yourself. It's, it's more of, um, showing, showing off what you can do creatively. Um, so there's a line between, um, my commercial and my editorial work, for sure. Um, in terms of, um, the evolution of my aesthetic, <laughs> um, very early on, um, I even said this in my book. Actually, 
para I did not know really what I was doing. I just usually photographed what I liked, and I think that's how most photographers find their own voice anyway. Um, uh, by shooting a lot and shooting what you like, and then you look at your work as a collective and you figure out kind of what um, makes your brain tick. So um, a while I thought um, but I knew everything I needed to know to um, to realize whatever vision I had. Um, but of course, as time went on, parang um, I realized that there's uh, like so much more to learn. And um, so yeah, I mean, it's been uh, quite a journey to to find my own voice because it's so hard. Because when I started out, um, it's not like when photographers start today. They're always they're also um, exposed to um, social media and um, whatever is going on around the world. When I was starting out, um, photographers would usually just execute what um, magazines, like editors, would want. Like, literally, you go to shoot and they itself, you'll see what you have to do. Um, they called it pegs, uh, which is a very bad term. Um, but, um, yeah, they you usually just had to copy what um, the editors wanted you to do. So, um, parang I came at a time na may transition na that parang ako I started like making my own mood boards for shoots and actually asking them what we're gonna shoot so I can maybe collaborate on the idea if they already had an idea or maybe I would pitch an idea to them. So, um, so parang um, it was a uh, I guess a transition period for for creatives to be more like for photographers to be more creative and parang really get into the creative direction aspect of uh, shooting. So um, so and at the time, uh, if you wanted to succeed as a photographer, you kind of have to know how to do everything. So parang kailangan palay kang may baon na um, na skills. Like you have to be able to execute whatever. Um, the client or uh, the editor wants. So there was not much of a focus on having your own voice or having your own vision. And I think what's good about um, the photographers now and uh, the industry in general is para may focus na now on photographers having their own voice and their own vision and um, really magazines book uh, photographers for their styles. So I think it's a good thing that now there's more of a focus on uh, photographers having their own distinct um, style and really booking them for their own style and not forcing them to do something uh, that uh, isn't really up their alley. Um, and I'm super proud of, uh, of course, all the young creatives out there right now because um, you can really see the passion in what they do and um, at such uh, young age, but and dami sa kanila who are doing really, really great work, um, and I'm very hopeful for the future of our industry. We've all been locked down. Um, I've only been talking about uh, the issues relating to the LGBTQIA plus community, um, and it was a conscious choice at the time because um, I, parang life before um, COVID was. For me, very hectic, and because um, I would have shoots every day and uh, a lot of deadlines, so parang I would focus my energies on certain things lang talaga, like the LGBTQIA plus community, um, and that's all I really talked about. But since we've been locked down, um, I think um, since there's a lot more time, parang na bago bigla yung 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 schedule. Eh. So um, especially for us creatives, uh, we're freelance and we most of us don't have any um, jobs right now. So um, there's a lot more free time uh, to really digest what you see online. And uh, I think the most disturbing thing and I think my being very vocal recently has is also a reaction to this um, and it's the spread of uh, misinformation online. It's it's really um, reached a peak because um, now even people in my household um, tend to believe what they read online and um, they're mostly fake news. 
So um, I think um, now that uh, there's so much time, like you have time to verify information. It's so easy to verify information online. Um, so if I know I have um, the right information, might as well share it. And I think um, we have to combat this culture of um, misinformation with um, with information that's correct and reliable. So I think that's one of the biggest issues we have as a country. I think uh, the Philippines has grown uh, leaps and bounds um, in terms of LGBTQIA plus uh, representation um, in the community and exposure then um, to the public. Um, I think the the numbers of uh, the Pride Mart, the recent Pride parades have uh, been proof that it has been improving uh, exponentially. Like I think a few years ago, it was just seven thousand people attending Pride, and then suddenly it became twenty thousand, twenty something thousand, and then last year it was seventy thousand. So I think there's much more awareness now of um, the community, and in terms of representation, um, I mean there's a lot of uh, BL series now that are Filipino and that's a good sign but um, on the other hand it's um, I think the um, the entertainment industry uh, in general like the the major TV networks and film studios the major ones still um, aren't as open to um, proper representation I would say um, uh, of our community because um, I think the people as much as a lot of the directors now like Samantha Lee um, and writers are very progressive I think the key decision makers of course the bosses are still uh, from another generation so um, I think they, they still have this mentality of like halimbawa these um, actors if they come out they will lose their opportunity to to become a leading man or a leading lady so um i think um it will take a, a bit more time um for a proper representation to happen especially in our country because right now it's like most of the um lgbtqia plus or most of the gay characters at least um on uh, national television from the major networks are mostly objects of comedy. Um, so um, there's a long way to go. There's been progress, but there's still a long way to go. This is BJ Pascual, photographer, advocate, and human being. And catch me on the statement issue of Rank Magazine at www.rankthemag.ph. Oh, oh,